Florida. It's known for its pristine white sand beaches and naval air station. It's the westernmost city in the Florida panhandle where modern Florida meets the old south. But on July 31st, 2015, a triple homicide shocked this seaside community. And when news broke that these killings looked like ritualistic witchcraft, it only intensified the public's fevered fascination. But was this really the occult? or an age-old motive, money. A uh, triple murder will get headlines anywhere you go. I think it fundamentally shakes any town up because of the horrific nature, especially when it's a family and you have two brothers and a mother that are murdered. Richard, one of the primary breadwinners of the family, uh, worked for the Department of Homeland Security out at NAS Pensacola. And when he didn't show up for work on Friday, now the government gets concerned. His supervisor actually drove to the Smith home on Friday the 31st. There were cars there. Um, seemed like obviously people should be home. He knocked on the doors. No one was answering. So it seemed a little, you know, suspicious. He ended up calling the sheriff's office to come do a welfare check. The first thing you get is the odor, is the smell of death. You know, there's no other way to describe it, it's death. We found the bodies, of course, in different places in the house. And they had been covered with blankets and towels, as though there was some effort to kind of hide the fact that someone underneath was dead. The crime scene, I would say, was horrific. You know, you have three dead bodies, the manner in which they were murdered was absolutely brutal. John and Von Sill had been beaten in the head with a hammer. They all had their throats slit. Richard had been shot. His throat had been slit. Definitely bloody and definitely brutal. We knew that there was no signs of forced entry, so who else could get inside that home? And the only answer to that was Dom Hartung. Donald Hartung was the son of Von Seal Smith and half-brother of Richard and John Smith. As an investigator, we go to the scene and try and find out who was the last person to see these people alive. He didn't have an alibi. He just told us that he had been over there that day. When was the last time you saw your family? Tuesday. I fixed down on everything. He didn't make much money. He really didn't own anything other than his car. So there was a lot of things that someone could be jealous in his situation of what his family and his other brothers had. So that raised a red flag. The sheriff called it a ritualistic killing, even saying there were elements of witchcraft involved. There was some evidence found at his home that clearly indicated that tie-in. Initially in the investigation, law enforcement had gone into Donald Hartung's home and there was a prayer room that was set up. It had some books of witchcraft, had some symbols of witchcraft. We were very upset and angry that the sheriff had made those statements. I know if another religion had been the focus, they would have maybe reached out to their minister, reached out to someone in their community to say, do y'all know this guy? Have y'all ever seen him? Something. I guess you have a Ouija board and some stuff in your house. Yeah, I'm over here. Yeah, there's a name for it. Sacrifices or no. 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 Donald Hartung was a dabbler, if anything. He probably picked up a couple of books at your local bookstore. He was not part of our community. He was not part of my church. 
it's always someone doing evil witchcraft things in dark rooms. That's not true. Wicca's primary focus, do what you will, though it harm none. I don't care what someone does in their home as long as they're not hurting somebody. As time went on, we realized it really did not have anything to do with any sort of witchcraft or, or Wiccan religion, but in fact was because he was the sole heir to the estate of his family. He was indicted by a grand jury and charged with first degree capital murder for all three of the victims. All right, ready for the jury? Ready. Please bring them in, please. Von Seal Smith, Richard Smith, and John Smith. Those are the three people that were killed in this case, and they are the mother and the two half-brothers of this defendant, Donald Hartung. The three of them, Von Sill, Richard, and John, all live together in their home on Deerfield Drive. And on Tuesday, July 28th of 2015, you will see that this family was brutally and violently murdered by this defendant. And the evidence will show, ladies and gentlemen, that he did it all for their money. This family, just looking at their home and the way they lived, you would never know. And they were worth almost a million dollars, you know, between the three of them in investments. So our motive definitely was financial. His mother left everything to his two brothers, John and Richard. She specifically excluded him from her will. And what you will see during the course of this trial through evidence is that for him to get anything, they all three had to die. I heard Ms. Jensen's opening statement, and it was masterful. But it leaves out many of the facts or the lack of facts that you are going to hear. There's one thing that the state cannot tell you or prove to you is that my client ever saw that will. There is no evidence that my client ever read that will, saw that will, or in any way had knowledge of the contents of the will. There is no indication of any physical evidence that he committed any of the murders. There was no gun found. There was no gunshot residue found on any of his clothing. There was no blood found at his house. There was no blood found in his car. There's no way beyond a reasonable doubt that you could find Mr. Hartung is guilty of these murders. First of all, nothing's a slam dunk. Whenever the prosecution walks into the courtroom, the prospective jurors on the venire panel, they all identify with the state. Nobody wants to identify with someone accused of a crime. So they have a leg up initially coming into a courtroom. It doesn't matter whether it's a trespass case or a spitting on the sidewalk case or a triple homicide. The prosecution always has that edge. They wanted to link it to possibly something to do with Richard's job at the Department of Homeland Security. There is a possibility that Richard potentially could have been murdered and the family murdered because of something Richard did. Before you need it. The state put forth a solid motive for the murder of the Smith family, but it lacked any hard physical evidence that linked the defendant, Donald Hartung, to the killings. They did not have the gun that was used in the murders, nor had they found any blood evidence in Hartung's car or home. But when they began to present what evidence they did have, the defense was ready, discrediting the crime scene investigation and the prosecution's witnesses. This case was difficult because it was purely circumstantial. It was also difficult because we knew that Donald Hartung went to this home on a regular basis. So typically, if you find fingerprints or DNA, those are pieces of evidence that are great for the state when they are linked to the suspect. Well, here, if we found his fingerprints or his DNA, we expected to find it because he went to the family home. This is State's Exhibit 140. What does this show? The trash can that was behind the door. <coughs> 
This is tapes 141. What does this show? After taking the top off of the garbage can, the items in it. This is tapes exhibit 148. What does this show? There's a bloody paper towel. It appears to be a cigarette butt. Well, there's cigarette butts in this trash can where whoever committed this crime is putting stuff from the house, cleaning up. And lo and behold, Donald Hartung's DNA is on all those cigarettes. Did you transport the trash can yourself from the home to the sheriff's office? Yes, ma'am. It was in a big leaf bag in the back of my vehicle, secured by stuff so it doesn't move around. And what did you do to try and ensure that the items in the trash didn't shift in the drive? I drive the speed limit. I just put stuff around it so that it wouldn't move. A great deal was made by the state that there was a cigarette butt. We have no idea of knowing how that cigarette butt got there. Did somebody walk through the house and see a cigarette butt on the floor by a knocked over ashtray and pick it up and throw it in the trash can? When it, the trash can was being driven to the sheriff's department, was the trash in the trash can jostled? Because there was no evidence that the trash can was securely lashed to the inside of the crime scene van. So you worked for the Escambia County Sheriff's Office as a crime scene technician until May 18th, 2018, correct? Yes, ma'am, I did. And that's the day that you were fired? Yes, ma'am. And you were fired because it came to light that you were stealing drugs from the evidence room? Yes, ma'am. I worked with Christine Rollins for years on a number of different cases, and unfortunately, she stole some pills in non-criminal cases from the uh, sheriff's office evidence locker, and she was fired. You were charged with 24 felony charges? Yes, ma'am. You were facing potentially 170 years in prison, is that right? Yes, ma'am. You received no jail time? No, ma'am. And a requirement for you under that plea agreement is that you testify truthfully in any and all cases where you are a witness as a former crime scene technician for the Escambia County Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. And you do want to help the state, correct? No, I'm just here to tell the truth. I definitely had butterflies for her because it was obviously a humiliating experience and it's embarrassing to talk about. But you do have some concern how it's going to come across to the jury. Did you go into Richard's room? Yes. And did you see anything in Richard's room? In Richard's room, we located a safe that was unlocked and it had a large amount of money inside of it. So there was a total of about $13,651 in the safe. If this motive was robbery, the items, the valuables would have been gone. Because they were not taken, we felt like it was more probable that Mr. Hartung was the culprit because he is now set to inherit it. He does not have to take a dime. It would be brought to him. While you were at the home on July 31st, did you touch the kitchen sink handle in the kitchen? Yes, I did. Okay. And why? It looked like there may be some residue or something there, so I put gloves on. Talking with another text there, decided we were going to remove the handle so we could view it better, maybe um, see what was there, if anything. And so I assisted by taking the screw out of the top of the sink so it could be removed. They were just having difficulty getting it done. And did you learn, later learn, that your DNA may have come up on that sink handle <clears throat> and screw? Yes, ma'am, I did. The police work was very poor. It is important to keep a clean scene. In this case, no record was kept of who went in and out of the scene. There should have been a deputy stationed at the door with a notebook. So we don't know who all rummaged through the house, what they found or what they didn't find. Anytime you go into a crime scene, you try not to contaminate it or introduce any foreign objects, such as the sergeant's DNA. Way you do that is fresh gloves, masks, booties. There was no evidence that this was a botched crime scene. I think that was one of the defense's theories where they were trying to throw the jury off that we didn't do our job. Where does Richard learn that base? What does he do out there? Uh, he learned that from Richard. Yeah, he learned that from security. Richard held a pretty significant job in the crypto area, where it means he works with codes and computers and that sort of thing. Mr. Palomino, where are you employed? I'm with the Department of Homeland Security, Federal Protective Service. Now, were you assigned to um, investigate the death 
of a DHS employee named Richard Smith. Yes. Any special reason you were sent from Texas? To see if there was any nexus with the crime to the federal government. What types of government property were seized from Richard's home, car, or office? Computers, laptops, and cell phones. Richard had a high security clearance, much higher than top secret. We don't really know what he did because it's classified. Now, there was one government-issued laptop computer that was not opened. Am I correct? Correct. So we don't know what was on that computer, essentially what you're telling me. Other investigative techniques, we determined that he, that computer was seldomly used. Um, so that, that wasn't what I asked. Right? What I asked was, we don't know what was on that computer. We don't. There is a possibility that Richard potentially could have been murdered and the family murdered because of something Richard did. Because the computers that were in the house were seized by Homeland Security agents. Why would Homeland Security fly an agent from Texas to Pensacola and not give us any written reports as to what they did or why they were here? Highly unusual. They wanted to link it to possibly something to do with Richard's job at the Department of Homeland Security. Basically, point to anyone other than Donald Hartung. So how are you gonna sit there and tell us that you didn't feel that? Tonight on Closing Arguments, OnlyFans model Courtney Clenny charged with the murder of her boyfriend. She claims she stabbed him in self-defense. We'll dive deeper into everything we know so far as this case moves forward. And on the docket, I'll look ahead to our live coverage of the staged suicide murder trial. We'll break down the prosecution's theory of this case before our cameras take you inside the courtroom. Closing arguments with Vinny Politan tonight at 8, 7 central, only on court. We pray for it to survive. A few hours after his mother and brothers were discovered dead, Donald Hartung waived his Miranda rights and agreed to be interviewed by detectives with no attorney present. And during the lead investigator's testimony, those videotaped interviews were played. And that cop, Matt Infinger, showed Hartung as an emotionless and callous killer. So let me take you back to July of 2015. Were you assigned uh, to investigate a triple homicide on Deerfield Drive? Yes. And did you see any signs of forced entry? No. Now, while you were on Deerfield Drive on July 31st, did you make contact with Donald Hartung? Yes. What was your initial conversation with him? I just asked him if uh, he was aware of what was going on. He said, yeah, they told me they were deceased. And what was his um, demeanor when you first contacted him? Just nonchalant, just didn't seem too worried about what was going on. Did Mr. Hartung agree to speak with you? He did. And did you talk to him at the scene there, or, or where did you go? No, uh, we went to the sheriff's office, to the interview room there. Donald Hartung seemed very odd to me. When I interviewed him, he showed no emotion whatsoever about his family being killed. Did they tell you? Your folks, your family on there was killed. Killed. They said they were deceased. They probably had them killed. It looked like they were shot. Shot. Mm -hmm. How was that? Probably looked like they were shot. It's hard to tell because there's a lot of clothes on top of them. Clothes on top of them. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. When Mr. Hartung was notified that his entire family had been murdered and brutally murdered, Mr. Hartung looked calm. He looked unemotional. He looked unshocked. I've never seen anybody be told that their entire family has been brutally murdered and there be no uh, emotion, no reaction. Just as a matter of fact, like you told him, it's raining outside. Your mother's pretty much the only family you got. Yes. You've shown no emotion the whole time you've been in here. And you know that they could do. I mean, it's like you almost prepared yourself for this. You've had days to prepare yourself for this. So I'm off. 
Most normal people, your mother's killed and your two brothers, and if somebody accused you of it, they're gonna become angry. That's a normal human reaction if somebody accuses you of something you didn't do to become agitated. He never did. Was Mr. Hartung taken home after that interview? Yes. Did you interview him again? I did. When was that? Later that night into the next morning around 1.30, I believe. Some of these written things, um, like, especially this time of the year, others two full moons sometimes they'll uh, offer sacrifice <laughs> is there anything such as sacrificing either of animals or people in the Wicca religion no there is not there certainly was a tradition of, of both animal and human sacrifice in the ancient world, but one of the things that characterizes the modern religious world is that we have abandoned completely human sacrifice and animal sacrifice as well. It wasn't ritualistic. We don't have hammers on our altar. Witches meet on the full moon, and it wasn't even the full moon when they were murdered. It has nothing to do with witchcraft. Nobody has seen these people since Tuesday, since you saw them. Obviously, that's one thing. So how are you going to sit there and tell us that you didn't kill them when you're the last one to see them? Why don't you tell me what you did for them? I didn't do anything about that. Yeah, you did. Try and go through now again. You did. Okay. There were some inconsistencies in the statements he gave to law enforcement and what the evidence actually showed. One time she leaves, she's Well, I usually said the watch the news of all the day after that. Then he watched the news, yeah, about 30 news, right? Which one? Normally we watch the national news. Well, I'm going to the news and I'm going to the did you see Mr. Hartung leave the Smith family family home on July 28th? Yes, I did. Do you remember approximately what time it was? Twilight. And can you tell us what twilight is? Well, it's once the sun sets, so to speak. Do you remember when sunset was back then? I think it was about 7... Body. Darcy is Richard. That's Richard Tom. Now, was he there when you were there Tuesday? No, I never saw him. Did he? I always leave before he. Well, I always most of the time I leave before he gets on. Did you see RT that day on the 28th before or after you saw Donald Hartung leave the residence? It was before Mr. Hartung left the residence. Donald told law enforcement that he never saw Richard that day, that he left before Richard got home, and the neighbor next door said, in fact, that he saw Richard come home before Donald left the house that day. The second interview that I had with Donald Hartung, I asked him, did you ever touch any of Richard's personal belongings? Okay, well, my personal belongings, his cell phone, anything like that, did you touch anything? Anything that was Donald's DNA was found on a bloody fabric case that Richard carried around that had his financial statements, it had his checkbook, it had bills. Then we found Donald's DNA not only on the outside of that case where it should not have been, but actually on the inside in Richard's checkbook. Richard's checkbook was found in the kitchen. Donald goes in the kitchen to cook dinner. If the checkbook's there, he's probably going to move it from where you're preparing food. And so Donald moving a checkbook would get his DNA on it. That doesn't mean he went through RT's checkbook. And it was those kinds of innuendos that were very helpful to the, uh, to the state's case. He went to his mother, then he tortured her so she could tell a uh, combination for the safes and stuff. He said he tortured her, I'm sorry? He tortured her.
Kennedy's next witness claimed that Donald Hartung confided in him and, in fact, confessed to the murder of his family. The problem? He was a jailhouse informant, convicted of attempted murder. But on day four of the trial, dressed in prison stripes, Marlon Purifoy took the stand. Would the jury find him credible? Donald Wayne Hartung is accused of killing his two half-brothers, John and R.T. Smith, and his mother, 78-year-old Bonnie Smith. The state says the evidence will prove that Hartung's alleged killings were motivated by money. Now, were you housed with Mr. Hartung at the uh, Escambia County Jail? Yes, ma'am. Did Mr. Hartung start talking to you about this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. He said he hated his mother because of the way she treated him. She treated him different from the other boys. Did he say why? That he had different daddies. Any other reasons he was upset with his mom? Yeah, she left him out the wheel. That really made him mad, he said. I never want to use a jailhouse informant if I don't have to. We receive letters every day from people claiming that they have information. Marlon Purifoy wrote a letter to the state attorney's office, and I sent an investigator out to go talk to him. The first time I talked to Marlon Purifoy, I knew that Donald had talked to him because of the things that Marlon told me that Donald had told him about the case. And there was no way that Marlon Purifoy would have known those things unless Donald Hartung told him. Did he tell you who killed his mother and two brothers? He said he killed them. Did he tell you why? He said he wanted he, he want the money because she left him out the will. Number one, there's no evidence whatsoever that he knew there was money in the family. There was no evidence whatsoever. Number two, no one knows whether my client knew of the existence of the will. There was no evidence he ever saw the will, so I don't think that theory held as much water when you analyze it as the state thought it held. He went to his mother, and then he, he tortured her so she could tell it uh, was accommodation for the safes and stuff. He said he tortured her, I'm sorry? He tortured her. How? He cut off our left pinky finger. Marlon Purifoy told investigators that Donald Hartung had told him that he actually tortured his mom's pinky to get a combination to a safe. That was nowhere in any paperwork. We didn't know about it. Her pinky finger was missing, but there's no evidence it was by torture. She was murdered by someone hitting her on the head with a hammer, and she could have put her hand up to her head after the first blow. It could have come off that way, but that allegation of torture was never proven. Marlon also told investigators about a safe that was in Von Sill's closet in her bedroom. Law enforcement never found that safe. We would have never known about it except for Marlon Purifoy. So there were things, again, that, that he told us that there was no way he could have known. I want to talk to you first about any relationships that um, Mr. Hartung may have talked to you about with his family, okay? Okay. And did he tell you anything personal about his son? Yeah, he said his son got molested when he was three years old by his brother, uh, John. He said he told his mother about the, uh, when his son got molested. His mother said she didn't believe it. He said that, that made him mad right there. He started, like, hating his mom and stuff behind that. Are you familiar with the term jumping on someone's case? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain what that means? When people jump on people, some people tell people about their cases and stuff, and they, they, they call the state attorney and, and tell them, you know what I'm saying? They know something about this case. I understood you right. You were saying that's when one person will say they've got information about a different person's case, and then they'll contact the state attorney? Yeah. And the reason for that is trying to get a benefit for themselves, correct? Right. So that's what you've done with Mr. Hartung's case. No, I ain't jumping on this case. The way he was telling me how he did his mother, that was, it was sad. And I got a close relationship with my mom, you know what I'm saying? And I just, like, thought it was a real wrong. So, just a few minutes ago, you testified that you're testifying today because you were getting a benefit on your case, correct? Right. Hoping to get a benefit. With the open discovery in Florida, we get all the arrest reports. We take the depositions and get transcripts of them. These are all provided to Donald. 
Purifoy often was in Donald's cell, went through Donald's possessions. So Purifoy got an immense amount of information from reading that information that we had sent Donald. They called Donald Harton Jr. I think the jurors were fascinated to hear from Donald Hartown's son. This was the only family member left out of all five of them left to testify. And I believe it was important for them to hear from him, to hear a voice, and get some background information on the family and the family dynamic. When is the last time you physically saw your father? When I was 17 years old. When your father called you about the deaths of your grandmother and your uncles, um, what, what did he say? He said, son, they're all dead. I was like, it's kind of weird. What, what are you talking about? He's like, they're all dead. Your grandmother, uh, RT, and uh, John. They're all dead. Was there some sort of rift between your grandmother, Richard, and John, you, and your father? There was a situation with John when I was a kid. He exposed himself to me when I was a child, and uh, I had brought it up to my mom probably a couple of days later, and because of that, uh, a rift had formed between them. I don't think they, I, don't, I mean, I was a kid at the time, so I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but um, I know they didn't talk for a good period of time. Whose side did your grandmother appear to take? Oh, she, uh, she took John's side. Okay. It's pretty obvious. Did that incident seem to separate your father from the other three? Yes. It seemed like he was kind of the black sheep of the group over there. He was always separated from the rest of them. Until him and my mom got divorced, um, and he lived at the ocean front of Virginia Beach by himself for a little while, and then he moved down to Pensacola, which surprised me, but moved down here. Donald Hartung Jr. was a difficult witness to put on the stand, first of all, because he's obviously revealing very private information about an incident that happened to him when he was a child. That did not make me feel good to have to call him as a witness, but the fact that he had information that gave credibility to Marlon Purifoy about the family dynamics, it helped us show that, in fact, Marlon Purifoy was providing information that he could have only gotten from Donald Hartung, the defendant. Can you say within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, these bodies were not killed on Tuesday? Only on Court TV. had presented jurors with compelling testimony and strong circumstantial evidence against Donald Hartung. But defense attorney Michael Griffiths was not going down without a fight, hammering away at the police investigation and attacking the forensic science. He did what he could to create reasonable doubt in the minds of the jury. The defense's strategy first was to try and prove that the murders did not occur on that Tuesday. And it was also their goal, obviously, to prove that it was anyone other than Donald Hartung. Investigator Enfinger, who was lead homicide investigator on this case, has testified that he determined by 1.30, within an hour of him arriving at the crime scene, Mr. Hartung was the person who committed the murders, and he did not have anyone else as a suspect, nor did he investigate anyone else. Do you see any issues with that? It's very problematic. Once you make a preliminary opinion based on a hunch or an instinct, and you don't look at any other possibilities. Uh, for example, the, of the three victims, one had a position with Department of Homeland Security. Now, was he the target and these others a cover-up? We don't know. But once a detective develops a theory and only considers information which supports his or her theory, then you are either ignoring or refusing to accept other possibilities. The defense's strategy, from the state's point of view, was to poke holes in it, okay? There is no smoking gun, there is no eyewitness. These are all circumstantial uh, evidence items and they do not amount to guilt in this case. Donald Hartung accused of brutally murdering three people, hitting them with a hammer. And you know that you're gonna have blood splatter all over when you do something like that. 
No blood was found in Donald's car. No blood was found in Donald's home. No blood was found in all of the evidence they seized from Donald's house. And had he done something, there would be some kind of blood splatter somewhere. And there wasn't. Not a minuscule amount. In my opinion, the biggest factor in the whole case for the defense was the scientific evidence absolutely disputed the time of death that the state put out, which would be Tuesday night after Donald was there at the residence. It's been posited that the Smiths were murdered on Tuesday, the 28th of July, and the bodies were not discovered until Friday, the 31st of July. Did you see anything odd about having a dog locked in the house with these three people for that period of time? Yes. When a person dies in an enclosed environment, like a closed house, um, house pets, commonly cats and dogs, uh, when they get to the point where they don't have any other food source, they've exhausted whatever there is, they will then feed on the dead body. Uh, that's a very common phenomenon. And so the idea that there were three dead people in this house uh, over a period of days, purportedly, and the dog was there and had not fed on any of the people, I found unusual. I thought was most telling is when you die, flies and maggots form. I mean, it's just the reality. None of these bodies had any flies or maggots. Would you expect to have found some fly larva on these bodies if the Smiths were killed on the 28th and they were not discovered until the 31st? Uh, yes, that would be likely. It tells us scientifically that Donald did not kill those people on Tuesday night. Can you say, within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, these bodies were not killed on Tuesday? I cannot tell you it's impossible. I can tell you that Tuesday is inconsistent with the scientific and medical evidence. All right, members of the jury, it's my understanding you've reached a verdict. Have you reached a verdict? Yeah. In the circuit court in and for Scammon County, Florida, state of Florida plaintiff versus Donald Wayne Hartung, defendant. We, the jury, find the defendant. Tonight on Closing Arguments, OnlyFans model Courtney Clenny, charged with the murder of her boyfriend, will dive deeper into everything we know so far as this case moves forward. Closing Arguments, coming up next, only on 6-8. The defense made some pretty big strides in their effort to create reasonable doubt in the minds of the jurors. And they did it by calling a wide variety of expert witnesses. Now there was only one witness left, the only person who the state believed truly knew what happened, the defendant himself, Donald Hartung. I think it's always a good decision to keep a defendant off of the stand. I don't know in my 17 years that I've ever seen a defendant do well enough that it's going to benefit their case, especially when it comes to cross. I think sometimes they hold up pretty well when their defense attorney is, you know, asking them questions, but I think when the state gets an opportunity to kind of poke holes, um, it doesn't typically look good. I didn't put him on the stand because there was nothing he could have added to what the evidence was. Donald is a smart guy. He was not a sophisticated man that would be able to, I don't believe, stand up to Bridget's questioning. Members of the jury, both the state and defense have now rested their case. The attorneys now will present their final arguments. In July of 2015, Richard Smith, Von Seal Smith, and John Smith were all alive and well. They were living, they were eating, they were breathing. This family of three was minding their own business, staying to themselves, and taking care of one another for years. For years! And no one tried to harm them. Until that Tuesday, July 28, 2015, when this defendant, Donald Hartung, already had in his mind that he was ready to retire. 58 years old, he wanted to cash in 
on his family's fortune. He wanted the money that he knew he was never going to get unless and until all three of his family members died. I had absolutely no sense on whether I had this jury or not. Sometimes I would make eye contact with a juror and it would seem I may get a nod of approval, but then I would see Mr. Griffith get up there and I would see that same juror give him a nod of approval. So I, I never really got a feeling either way from the jury. As I suggested to you in my opening statement, there would never be any evidence that Donald saw the will, knew of the will, read the will, or knew of its contents. The only indication you may have that Donald knew of the contents of the will would be based on what Purifoy, the jailhouse informant, testified to. Now, keep in mind, he cut a great deal for himself by testifying. He was facing a mandatory life sentence that was reduced to 30 years. Here's the real question. Why was Richard's safe left open and that money in there? Was somebody in that safe looking for something other than money? He did work for Homeland Security in the computer division. We don't know what he did. Could that have been what led to the murder of these people? I think every lawyer who has tried a lot of cases, they've won cases I think they lost, and they've lost cases they were sure they've won. So I always caution my clients that I don't know what the jury's going to do. Hi, members of the jury. It's my understanding you've reached a verdict. Have you reached a verdict? In the circuit court in and for Scammon County, Florida, state of Florida plaintiff versus Donald Wayne Hartung, defendant. As to the charge in count one, Fonsil Smith, we the jury find the defendant, daughter Hanta, Hartong, guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. As to the charge in count two, John Smith, we the jury find the defendant, Donna Hartong, guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. As to the charge in count three, Richard Smith, we the jury find the defendant, Donald Hartong, guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. So so we all it's such an overwhelming sense of relief. It's an overwhelming sense of justice. And it's an overwhelming sense of doing the right thing for the right reason as a prosecutor. Is there anything I could do differently? Could I have questioned witnesses differently? Should I have gotten a different expert? Should I have argued this point harder? Should I have put Donald on the stand, forced him to, you gotta testify. You ask yourself that all the time. But at the end of the day, I think they were swayed by the emotion of the deaths. What's the classic thing you always hear? Gosh, he was the nicest guy. I, I would have never known that he was involved in that. So I don't know what the trigger was that pushed Donald Hartung over. Uh, I just know that I rest comfortably knowing that we got the right person. The jury came back and voted to impose life instead of death. I would be lying if I said it's not disappointing. I mean, obviously, we felt that this crime warranted the death penalty or we wouldn't have sought it. You know, you work so hard on a death penalty case more than just, you know, a, 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 another murder case that doesn't involve the death penalty. So certainly, it was, it was disappointing. If you're a scientific person, you've got to question whether justice was served because the scientific evidence didn't support the verdict. If you're a person that says, well, he probably did it because he was there. Who else would have done it? Those people may think justice was served. And in the end, only God knows. Donald Hartung is currently serving three consecutive life sentences at the Graceville Correctional Facility in Florida. An appeal in his case has been filed. I'm Ashley Banfield. Thanks for watching.